Research tells us that we'll have more psychological and physical problems if we don't have safe people in our lives. Some people falsely believe that if they have God, they don't need people. But relationships themselves are a spiritual activity. God designed us to be fuel to one another and to provide each other with the support that helps us face the trials and discouragement of life. Dr. Townsend shares why our interactions with others are so important and gives the top five reasons we need relationships. Hi, everybody. Um, we're in Chapter 10 now of uh, Safe People. And this chapter is, Why Do We Need Safe People? Why do I need all these people anyway? Can I just like, you know, have a hobby? What's this all about? Maybe a, a good Labrador Retriever will fix things. Well, sorry, you need safe people for lots of reasons. And actually, um, what we found out is that this safe people thing is not, uh, it's not a luxury. It's not like, well, I'll get to that when I'm, you know, not as busy. If you don't have, and you know my term, the life team, if you don't have a life team in your life of some safe people, it's bad news. The research says that um, you'll have more psychological struggles, there'll be more medical problems, uh, longevity of life issues, I mean, you die when you shouldn't, and um, career issues. I mean, it's a big deal. Because when you think about it, if, if God made the universe relational, he didn't mean to be, well, just pray to me and do what I say and then go help a bunch of people and then be busy. If we're not getting good stuff in from, from the relational universe, then um, it's like walking through life eating nothing but popcorn. You don't have fruits and vegetables and the right kind of protein. You just got you have a very limited way of surviving, and you're not getting what you need. So it's a big deal. You need the right people. And I'm going to go into what I consider in the book the five top reasons that you need safe people because I just believe some of us don't really understand what this is about. And maybe relationships have been painful, or maybe you got a bunch of sort of so-so relationships, and, and maybe that's all there is. But if you can kind of get a vision, this is sort of a visioning chapter for it. This is important. And I hope this, hope, hope this helps. Um, first, relationships are a spiritual activity. In other words, you know, if God, if God wants us to have a spiritual life, this is a big part of it. There's a, there's a lot of people that look at relationships in the vertical, I'm sorry, they look at spiritual life, not relationships, in the vertical. That here's me, and then here's God. And so he's the one that I need, he's the one that I go to for love and support and guidance and all that good stuff. And this is what we call the vertical view of, of the Christian faith. It is an incomplete view, and it is not what the Bible teaches at all. The Bible teaches that we do need God, and we go to Him, and we love Him, and we follow Him, and we surrender Him. But there's another aspect of this, and that is the horizontal. This is me and others. Because God doesn't just give us everything we need through Him and His Word and His love and His Holy Spirit. He also feeds us through other people. If... um. And most of us have a, a Bible on our computers, right? It's in our, an app or software. And if you did a search function in your Bible and put the word one another, or sorry, the term one another, um, you'd find a lot of stuff that the Bible says do that don't say it's about prayer and, and, and feeding the poor and, and you know reading the Bible. We're supposed to do those things, but it also says accept one another, comfort one another, love one another, um, Basically, be Jesus on skin with each other. And so, I want you to kind of clarify this, because a lot of people think, no, this is real spiritual life. This people thing, I'm just supposed to give. I'm just supposed to help them out. But think about it. If you're a spiritual person, and you think your only function is to give, support, love, evangelize, disciple, mentor other people, aren't you teaching those people how to sin? Now, think about my cookie logic here. I'm loving people, comforting people, teaching people, supporting people. But if I teach them to get stuff from me, to love, you know, to, to appreciate what I'm bringing, then, uh-oh, they're not trusting God anymore. I've got to teach them. I, don't, I got nothing to give you. Just read your Bible. I got nothing for you. I'm not going to spend any time with you. I'm not going to talk to you about your marriage, about your kids, about your divorce. I'm going to um, go off, tell you to trust God. But if you don't do that, and if you're really helping people, aren't you tra training them to go this way, which you won't do? Good for the goose, good for the gander. So relationships in themselves are a spiritual activity. So it's good to get that clear in your head so that you don't make the mistake of thinking, 
Oh my goodness, this is not, this is kind of psychobabble and this is like secular humanism. You know, it's really funny. When Henry and I started this a million years ago, we used to hear that a lot. We did these radio shows by these writers and people that thought we were, you know, you've given up God for Freud. We don't hear that much anymore. But I just have to say it anyway, just in case you've got this teaching in your head that this is not spiritual, it's very spiritual. Um, your second reason that we need safe people are for fuel. Fuel. In other words, fuel is where we get energy. Right? I mean, we're, we're very fuel conscious these days. We want to have, you know, fuel efficient cars. We want to have hybrids and cars that are running on anything but gasoline and all this stuff. Everybody's concerned about energy these days because there's not enough fuel accessible these days and we're doing all this research. Well, you yourself need fuel just like your car needs fuel or just like your, your house needs fuel. Um, you've got to get the get up and go from other people, which is what allows you to function. I want you to, to, to <clears throat> sometime you got a second, to look at the, the passage in the Bible, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, where Peter says that we are the stewards of God's manifold grace. In other words, God's grace is what, you know, runs the world, right? That the world wouldn't exist and bad things would happen, even worse than they're happening now, if God wasn't like grace in the world. We need Him. But also, it says that we are the stewards of His grace, so that people, safe people, are the ones that are the delivery system of the grace of God. So, I'll prove this to you. Think about some time when you've been maybe stressed out, or you've been really busy, or maybe there's been a struggle, or a loss, or a conflict, or whatever, and you didn't and you did what a lot of us do, which is we, you go in your cave and you just kind of work on the problem and you don't take care of yourself and you especially don't want to bother anybody because none of us want to be high-maintenance people, right? We don't want to ask and say, can I talk for a few minutes? And so you find that when you finish the conflict, you maybe you solve the relationship problem or you solve the money problem or the health problem or whatever, and you come out of it and you go into regular life again, you feel like, you know, a limp noodle. Why is that? Because you didn't get any fuel. You didn't take in the energy that God had had for you. Now think about other situations where you've struggled and you've had the courage to call somebody in the middle of it and say, I got nothing to offer you right now. I just need to vent right now. I just need to know that I'm okay. And you begin to find out, gosh, people care about me. That helped. We need that kind of fuel. So one of the things I, I do when I'm training leaders is I train them to go to people as fuel and to, to, to get out of the idea that my only function with people is to help them. Because leaders especially are trained that you're just a giver and you can't be a taker. It'll kill you. It'll make you really sick and you won't be happy. All right? Third thing is comfort. Comfort. You know, I don't know about you, but my life has struggle in it. I have a good life, I think, but it has, has had its valleys as well as the mountains. And um, there are those times when you have those losses and the stresses that there's really nothing you can do about it. I mean, if you have a loved one leave or move or die or there's a conflict and, and somebody hates you and you can't make them like you and no matter what you do, you can't, you can't reconnect the relationship because they're not interested anymore and they've checked you out and you can't control it when people die and you can't control it when you lose a job that you can't get back and you can't control it when um, people move that you love or, or when you have an economic problem. There are those situations that is, it's, it's just beyond solving a problem. It's into what do I do with this? For all of you problem solvers and sort of OCDs, you've got to learn that you need to know that someone is going to be with you. Guys, sometimes in those two periods of life that I just listed, the only answer is that I'm not alone. I'm not alone in that death. I'm not alone in that health problem. I'm not alone in that money problem. I'm not alone in that loss. And that's what comfort is, is somebody being with me. You know, uh, in, in, in the book of Job, when Job had all his, all his losses, lost everything, uh, in, in chapter 3, it says that his three friends sat with him seven days and seven nights and did not speak a word, for they knew his pain was very great, or his grief was very great. They were just with him. Because comfort gives you things you need. So that's another reason we need to save people for those situations where there's nothing but being with. There's no problem to solve. Then number four, strength in setting limits. You know, sometimes in life you're required... You know, Henry and I have a definition of character maturity, which is having the abilities you need to meet the demands of reality, having the abilities you need or the capacities you need to meet the demands of reality. 
Sometimes you got to set limits to meet those demands. You got to say no to people. You got to confront people. You got to disappoint people. One of the things I do when I'm working with executives is when I check with them every month, I'll say, Who'd you disappoint? I didn't disappoint anybody. Well, then you didn't get your, your goals met this month because everybody's got to disappoint every, somebody. Somebody wants to go out with you, you got to have time. Or somebody wants to have 10 minutes with you, I can't do it. Somebody wants to uh, you lend the money, you can't do it. I mean, you got to set limits sometimes, especially if you're in a toxic relationship where bad stuff happening and somebody's controlling you or judging or, or making it about them. Well, you can't do that in a relational vacuum. You can't do that being empty inside without people supporting you and knowing that you care about them, knowing they care about you, knowing and knowing that they care about you. We got to have voices inside that say, go for it. I believe in you. I'm on your side. I'm for you. I'm for you. I'm for you. And as you, the psychologists call it internalized, as you take in lots of those voices, it builds you up and you think, okay, I can have the courage to say, that's not okay for the way we're, we're working together. I'm not going to be able to tolerate that. I'm going to walk out of the room if you do that again, or I'm not going to have a partnership with you if you do that again. All those boundary things that Henry and I have been writing about all these years, you really can't set boundaries and you can't set limits unless you've internalized enough people. It's kind of amazing when um, you, you get out of your willpower and doing it all by yourself in your cave, when you allow some people to, when you say to somebody, I've got a tough conversation ahead of me, I've got to talk to my ex next week, or I've got to talk to my boss, or I've got to talk to my kids, and I'm really afraid it's going to blow up, and the people go, no matter what, call me. I'm for you. I'll be with you. And I've had time after time after time of people coming back after that and saying, I did ask those people that, and I thought about them when I walked into the room to have that tough conversation. I thought about them saying, no matter what, I'm for you. You need to have safe people in you because life has struggle and you've got to set limits sometimes and say no to bad things. And then number five, learning to love. I mean, really, what's life about except for God and love? I mean, God, we follow him and he's the answer to everything. What does he want us to do? He wants us to love. And that a life of love, there's all kinds of love. There's friendship love. There's um, kind of associate, uh, colleague, professional love. There's the love you have in your family, the love you have with your kids. If you're married, there's, there's a romantic love. Or if you're dating, there's romantic love. All those kinds of love. I mean, a life, a life with activity is good, but a life of love is the way to live. Well, how do you learn what a healthy relationship is? How to, how to talk to someone, how to open up, how to open them up, how to solve problems, how to give to someone, how to receive, all that stuff. It has to, you can't get it from just reading. Well, you can read my book, Lo uh, Loving People. That's a good book about that. But the book tells you to go do this stuff. Because the way we're trained from ch childhood on to watch love is that we hang around it. And we watch mom and dad. And if they're dysfunctional, we go, oh, that's really not healthy. Or we go, that maybe, maybe I should be in that relationship. We watch kids on the playground. We watch people in college. We watch neighbors. We watch our friends. Get the good stuff. Get good people around you and watch them and, and engage in a healthy relationship. And then all of a sudden you come away and you go, this is what it's about. You know, as a, as a coach, I found out that probably a third of what I do is teaching and two-thirds is experience. I want to have people engage with each other and, and, and doing, you know, learning vulnerability, learning listening, learning confronting. And then they go, okay, now I get it. If you just, if you just watch safe people, that's a big part of it but engaging with safe people, then you'll learn how to be a loving person. And that's the best sort of life at all, life of, life of all, is to know that I, I, I'm cared about and I care. So, some questions for you. Which need is the dominant one for you and why? So, the need to understand the relationships are spiritual, or to get the fuel, or the comfort, or the strength, or learning to love. And why is that? There's probably something in your own background that leads you to kind of saying, you know, I, I really... I don't ask for strength when I'm hurting. I care about somebody else, or I just shut down. So figure that out. It'll help you. Um, what challenge do you need fuel for? I bet you. I bet you've got some challenges ahead of you. You've probably got a business thing, or a personal thing, or a life thing, or a, a financial thing. Who are you calling to say? I just got to, I don't even know where I'm going here, but I just got to talk to somebody. I, I was working on a business deal that was really important to me a few a few weeks ago, and. There was a lot of a lot of risk to it, but a lot of positive to it. And I thought about one of my closest friends, and I just said, I need some time, and I don't even know if I'm going to make any sense. I just need to know that you're with me on this. And I think, as I, I had no structure to it. I just said, here's what I'm thinking. And we had this really great conversation, and he gave me some ideas, and his perspective it was wonderful because I really wanted his fuel. 
it was sort of as we engaged together, some really good answers came. So what have you got ahead of you that you need some fuel for? And what aspect of love do you need to experience for yourself? You know, you all, none of, we're not all getting the supplements we need all the time. Do you need right now structure? Somebody has structure because you don't have any. Do you need somebody to give you initiative because you're kind of like feeling like you don't have enough gas in your tank right now? Do you need somebody to give you wisdom? Is somebody needs to be there for you. Do you need somebody to forgive you because you can't be forgiven? Figure out what you need. Safe people are really the best way to live. And so this whole chapter, why do we need them? We need them to live. So I want you to have a good life. And we'll see you next time.